I would recommend that if you're going to print them off from home, pay the extra to get that resin coated uh, photo pro photo paper. It does cost extra, but it keeps uh, it, it keeps the ink from penetrating. It gives you a nice crisp, clean look. You can get it in glossy and matte you know any size you want now i used to think that printing photos at home was so much fun when it for the technology first came around i could not get enough of it um, but i concluded that ink is kind of expensive and i actually like um uh, the, the thickness of uh, professional printed paper as opposed to the stuff that you can buy through uh, through staples and the like. So I've gone full circle and now I go back to the photo labs. Now, you know, uh, places like Walgreens, uh, you can you can upload pictures or you can take the picture, the card physically to them and they'll print the prints for you and you can come pick them up. With Walgreens, you can uh, send them and have uh, people in other parts of the country pick them up if you want. Uh, I actually have kind of gone to the online photo processors because I'm an online gal. Uh, Shutterfly and Snapfish are a couple that I really like. You know, you just upload your pictures. They keep the pictures for you. Um, you can make photo albums and you can make prints um, and they are mailed to your house and I really like that. So um, I, I like the photo processors, the professional photo processors. And um, while I haven't completely done the math, I'm almost certain it is less expensive for me to have my prints done um, online than it is to, to buy the ink uh, to, for my printer. So I'm really happy with the professional photo processors. For those of you who aren't familiar with how to send pictures in emails, be sure and resize them, make them smaller. You may have all gotten those kind of uh, pictures where they're ginormous. You can't, you see your daughter, the your granddaughter's nose and nothing else because the picture is so big, you have to scroll up and down. So you before you send it to somebody, make it smaller. And I usually go about 600 pixels at the biggest end. Now, this is, is Outlook Express, but just about all male uh, clients work the same way. What you want to do is look for a button or a drop-down menu that says Insert. And it'll ask you, do you want to insert a picture? And you click on Yes. It will navigate you to your My Pictures area where you click on the picture that you want to insert into the email. And then you send it. Voila, it's pretty much done. Now, if you want to send the full size image, you probably want to attach it. And there might be cases that you do want to send a full size image. So you would click on this icon that says attach, or it looks like a little paper clip, and navigate your way to your My Pictures folder and then into the document folder that you want. In my case, it would be dogs and cats. Pick the dog that you want to attach and then click on attach and then it'll show your recipient a little icon a little attachment icon that tells them that there is an attachment to this email that they'll, they can open and download to their computer so that's how you attach it and the last thing I have to say tonight is about backing up your photos and we used to think that you know it was fairly foolproof to back up using CDs and DVDs. Well, they don't last forever. Um, you know, we're starting to find that out with music. So if you're going to use CDs and DVDs, it's uncertain how long they will last, but store them, you know, at room temperature. Don't, extro don't store them in extremes. Um, and buy the more expensive expensive archival quality CDs and DVDs meant for backing up data. Now there are online services like uh, um, SmugMug and Flickr and um, some of the other places where you can upload your pictures to um, them and they'll house them for you. 
Yeah, I'm still a little bit nervous about that because the, you know, online businesses are still shaking out. And about a year ago, one of these main services that the professional photographers use um, went, on, went out of business and they gave their professional photographers 24 hours to retrieve their information before it disappeared into the ether forever. And a lot of professionals were left high and dry. So um, online services... Uh, yes, but don't make them their your only backup source. Now, um, professionals, a lot of them have second hard drives, but these are being replaced with a lot of, uh, you know, with those portable hard drives, the my my books and the um, the passports and things like that. Um, so you just plug it in. When it's full, you you get another one. Now, with any hard drive, whether it's a, a big box computer hard drive or it's one of these portable hard drives the techies always say it's not when, it's not if it's when these hard drives will fail so you know how long they last i don't know um, it's it you know nothing's for sure in the digital era it seems like it should be but it's not so if there is a picture that you absolutely positively love and you want to see it to move into the future and pros and pass it on to your grandkids and, you know, um, have them pass it on to their grandchildren, be sure and make a hard copy of it. And, um, you know, if anything happens to the digital, you'll, um, you'll have a hard copy that you can re-digitalize. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. You guys are a great audience, and I hope you learned a lot about your cameras. And the one thing I can tell you most definitely about your digital camera is that if you don't go use it, you're going to forget all this information. It's going to seem foreign to you. So make it a top priority this week to go out and take a few pictures and use some of this knowledge that you learned tonight and um, enjoy your camera. Take lots of pictures and we'll see you again soon.